to join CITR Radio again, please. 101.9 FM is CITR, www.citr.ca. I only want to do punk interviews. Then I got into metal. Then I got into rap. But basically, when I started doing interviews, I thought, there's got to be some sort of equation you can plug things into. And I thought, there is totally an equation. It'll work for metal. It'll work for rap. It'll work for porn stars. It will even work for politicians. So I kind of alluded to this earlier did interviews with Mikhail Gorbachev. But then became the opportunity to interview the Prime Minister of Canada because during the APEC, this was about 15 years ago now, I still have my APEC bag that they give up. When you go to these press events, they give you this great swag. All the other APEC members are like, check this out, I still use it. There it is, Vancouver, Canada, APEC, 1997. I still got the bag, I still bring it on. People say, like, you get this leather bag in 97. Like, this, this was like amazing. So, I had this leather bag, you go in, I got into the whole event. I don't know, do you guys know much about APEC at all? No. After the UBC, there was a whole bunch of world leaders gathered here, including President Suhar. President Suharto. He was kind of like a nasty human rights type guy. And a lot of people at UBC had organized protests. So like Suharto was doing it through a protest organized all over UBC. There was an event happening at the Museum of Anthropology. So I decided to go to the pro closing press conference and ask Prime Minister Kretchen about punk rock. I decided to ask him about a band called The Nomads, a punk rock band. They didn't exist. I decided I would make up that name and try to you know, sneak in some sort of story about punk rock. So don't ask about punk rock. So before I actually got to the actual press conference, I was listening to CITR radio on the way to the actual final press conference, like at 5 a.m. in the morning. And CITR was covering the event believe it or not, live. The CITR rented cell phones, rented cell phones, and reporting live the event, and it was pepper spray, no protest going on. Like, CITR reporters like, ah, ah, and I was like, man, this is pretty crazy. I better ask about punk rock and pepper spray. But thinking back, before I even left my house, I thought back to the whole scene of like, what would go down? Would I get a chance to ask a question? The Museum of Anthropology was when it all ended. The John Craig Chan said something like, okay, it's over. Everybody go home, you know, it's over. But there was still a final press conference to go, and then all this pepper spray had come. So I showed up at the final press conference, and the press conference was empty. I couldn't believe it. Like, the whole press conference was empty. It seems like a lot of the reporters, all they're there is just, like, to cover the big stuff. You know, when the leader says it's over, they leave. They don't stick around for the final press conference. I guess because only Jean Chrétien was there. Wolf Blitzer from CNN. Christine Anantour, whatever. They'd gone home, so there's nobody to star fuck. In fact, a lot of the reporters that were there, it was pretty hilarious at the event. When I first got to I got my bag, and I was really proud to have my APEC bag. I remember walking in there, and there was an ice cream truck that was going through the reporter's area. And all the reporters were running to the ice cream truck and grabbing ice cream and running back to the desk. They were grabbing the ice cream. They were looking for the ice cream and not looking for the story. There was like a pigeon patch that reporters were fooling around with. I was walking in earlier a few days before I went to the final press conference. A guy walked up to me. This grabbed me. This grabbed me my little tag and said, you're an artwork. You ask some stupid questions to Mikhail Gorbachev. Are you going to ask some stupid questions to Jean Chrétien? I was like, oh boy, okay. And I, you know, I, I'm kind of I'm flashing back and forth, but that made me decide when I left that morning at 5 a.m. or whenever it was to the final press conference that I should go in disguise. So I thought, I can play your game too. So I shaved my head. I got little like notepad, little pen. I wore like a tie so I could stand up to the mic and look like a little junior reporter. And I could ask a question and then be none of those guys saying, oh, don't let that guy ask a question. As it turned out, there wasn't too much of a problem because, like I said, the final press conference is empty. Again, there's been all this protest that's been going on. There's all this pepper spray. It's like a big event. No other media is even showing up at this final press conference. Like, they're asking Jean Chrétien all these stupid questions, nothing even to do about it. But I walked up to the mic and I decided to ask him a question about punk rock and pepper spray. And when I asked the question about pepper spray, he ended up saying at the very end, for me, pepper, I put it on my plate. Plate. And what was really weird was he said that quote, and I was like, oh my god. He just said something kind of funny and weird and really disrespectful to the protesters. And I caused him to say that. They're going to come after me. So I quickly sat down, because I couldn't escape at that point. Remember, I went against my own rules. I should have ran hell out there. But I actually sat down there, and a guy sat down right in front of me. And the guy that sat down right in front of me had a little thing in his ear. And I thought, this is the end. This is, this is it. It's over. So I took out my little instamatic camera, and I took a photo of the back of his head. Because I think that if I was killed, kidnapped, somebody would find my egg bag, they'd take the film out, they'd develop it, and they would see the last photo I took was 
probably the guy that killed me. And he didn't get up. So why did God this the guy to get some revenge? So in other words, I was very scared after asking that question. I had no idea what it created. Years later, I had the opportunity to be able to crutch in myself, i.e. I'd be able to ask John Crutchen some questions. And what I decided I would do when I was asking John Crutchen these questions was not only would I ask a question about gay pack, I would also try to get him to do this weird 1960s game called the Hip Flip. And what it is is, it's like this weird twister game. I have a pole, goes on one person, and it goes on the other, like it's between two people. There's a little flipper thing. It's like flip around. He's like, why are you bringing that to the interview of Prime Minister of Canada? Well, I guess after interviewing Jean Chrétien first on a pep on our players, like, how can I top that or what can I do next? So I still <laughs> thought of questions, but I also thought I would bring around this hip flip thing. And I got actually Paul Martin to do the hip flip. I got Jack Layton to do the hip flip as well during the political roundabout thing. Stephen Harper, I fucked up because his publicist said to me, he'll do an interview with you, but he won't do the hip flip. And I stupidly said, no, it, there's going to be no interview unless there's a hit flip. <laughs> I was like, stupid, I'm fucking stupid. What I should have said is, okay, I'll do the interview, and then suddenly pull out hit flip. So again, I was, so, and that was the only chance and opportunity to do it. Since then, I've not had any chance to be able to approach Stephen Harper. So for this little clip you're going to see right now, this is the APEC Revisited, plus a bit of hip flipping with Jean Cret Chan here. And I'll just have them at UBC. Uh, in November of 1997, hit at Star Wars Video Hall.